Hi, this is Jay in the lab. And today what we're going to do is we're going to look at data loss prevention for the endpoint and getting evidence to the EPO server and subsequently getting it over to the evidence folder, wherever that might be. So there are a couple of pieces here. We have an evidence collection area called RepBuff, Program Data Off the C Drive, McAfee DLP Agent RepBuff. And when we generate evidence, it's going to appear in this folder. Great. Now we have incidents that are going to go up to the DLP Incident Manager. However, when you open it, you might not be able to see the evidence. Now, maybe you don't have rights because of your login credentials, or the evidence folder hasn't been properly created, or your system is not connected to the corporate network, which is required. If you're not part of your corporate network, it will send the incident, but it will not send the evidence. Now what we've done here is we've created a number of evidence files. In this case, print screen. Every time I hit print screen, it would capture the evidence, place it here in an encrypted fashion, and then we have to get it upstream to the evidence folder. Okay, so we're going to click on our incident and subsequently the evidence. And you'll see here, evidence file is not available. Well, in this particular case, the credentials to the evidence folder is just fine. However, the status of our DLP product is not connected to the corporate network. And when that happens, you're not going to be able to transmit the evidence files. See, not connected to the corporate network. And there's our evidence sitting there on the endpoint. Now, you as the administrator going in, you can't see any evidence because it was never sent. So how are we going to fix that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I've separated my screens so you can see everything that's going on. Now, we had a 164 address for my laptop that had the VMware workstation environment that contained EPO, SQL, and a domain controller along with another client. The reason we're making this change here to the IP address information is so that the local laptop can actually resolve where the evidence needs to go, which is needs to talk to the domain controller, and then the domain controller will handle the rest of the heavy lifting. Now, I happen to have a 174 address. That's because I just renewed my IP, but it really was at 164 before, and that's what I'm going to attempt to do this time around. So the first DNS declaration is going to be the domain controller in the VMware workspace. We're going to click OK. Great, all that information is now in play. Now it's connected to the corporate network. See how easy that was. Now watch what's going to happen to all of the evidence. So we're going to literally go from 16 evidence files to zero. And it will take up to about 30 seconds. and. When it does, it will go back up to the evidence folder. And you'll see here that it gets married to this evidence that wasn't there. Well, we go back one screen, we click on the screen capture, and lo and behold, there's our evidence. So there you go. That's how you would handle it potentially in a work group environment or any situation where you're not seeing evidence. Don't think you did a bad job if you're getting evidence and it's hit and miss. If your evidence folder is totally empty, it's likely to be a credential issue on the folder itself. That's it from here. Hopefully that helped you to understand incidents and evidence and how they're joined together and the necessity for good routing and our ACLs. I'm Jay Appel in the lab. Have a great day.